We're Hassani and Danielle Pettiford, and we're a real couple with real problems who almost called it quits. I was very frustrated. I became very disconnected, very um, jaded and, and cold. We have four children going on 20 years of marriage, and we practice what we preach. Our mission, to change the way couples relate to one another and teach them the skills needed to improve the quality of their relationships. This, this is, is the Couples, Couples Academy, Academy Show. Show. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Couples Academy Show. It's Monday. Good to see you. Hope uh, all is well. Hope you had an amazing weekend. We're here continuing a series we started on Friday. Uh, we're doing a Marriage in the Bible series, and we're going to wrap some scripture, unpack it, break it down. This particular scripture today, I think we're going to spend a week on it because it's so rich. There's so much to it. We're going to break this thing down and give you exactly what you need. Um, but listen, before we get started, just we want to make sure that you do what? That you like, share, and subscribe. Listen, that is your entry into this conversation. You know, we, we connect with people all over the world, and it's a pleasure for us to do so. But we want the word to spread. We want the message to spread. Every individual, every couple has been given a purpose in this earth to fulfill. The purpose that God has given Danielle and I is to really wave the marriage a flag, the marriage banner, and to help impact marriages all over the world. And you can partner with us just by clicking like and share and subscribe. You know what that does? In the algorithms, it makes these videos more viewable, more seen, and then all of a sudden it just pops up across somebody's uh, recommended video list and boom, they're there. And so that's what we ask that you do. We want to acknowledge who you are. So wherever you're chiming in from, leave your city, your state, your country so that we can acknowledge you. Listen, this weekend, actually, <laughs> December 10th to the 12th, that's our next last chance weekend. So it's still, you still have time to register. But this weekend, we have a last chance weekend and I'm excited because couples are reaching out, they're doing their prep work, they're getting, they're getting packed and ready to go. It's gonna be an amazing weekend. We, we always try to do something uniquely different and new. Uh, and so we're excited about all that we're going to be doing this weekend. So make sure you pray for these couples because many of them are on their last leg and trying to figure out what they're going to do. And this becomes a pivotal moment for them, a destiny decision that they've made to be here. And so we want to support them with what we're with, with what they're doing. Uh, so keep them in your prayers. Listen, we're going to dive in. There is a particular topic, um, love and respect in your marriage. That's right. Love and respect in your marriage. Um, there's a scripture. I mean, you know what, man? Oh, man, I was working on it this morning. And let's see if I can pull this thing up. Ah, it's not in here. Um, I, I guess I didn't upload it, but there's a scripture that talks about how it's important for a man to love his wife um, and for a woman to respect her husband. And it's found in, I think it's Ephesians, the fifth chapter, the 33rd verse, if I'm not mistaken, but it's powerful. And I think it's such a necessary, yeah, there it is. Ephesians 5.33, I'm just gonna read it. Um, it's somewhere here, folks. Love and respect. Blah, 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 blah. I'll get to it. I'll get to it. I thought I uploaded it. But it, it, it talks about how men and women have different needs, right? Women need love. Men need respect. And the way that you love a man is by respecting him. And the way that you respect a woman is by loving her. Does that make sense? But the reality is in our relationships today, there's so many husbands that love disrespectful wives. <laughs> and there's so many wives that respect unloving husbands. And it didn't start out that way for many of us. It got to that point uh, where we've transitioned through seasons of our relationship and things have gone from good to bad and from bad to worse. And we're trying to talk to you about how you get things back on track. How do you begin to go in the opposite direction? Because at the end of the day, wives need love and men need respect. And I think it would be great this week to sit down, watch this video with your spouse, have a conversation about what that actually looks like so that you can begin to realize it in your relationship. Because what works for your particular relationship may be something different than what works for another because the way it manifests is differently. And so we wanna take our time with this today. And, and today I wanna start off by talking to you about the way that wives can oftentimes disrespect 
their husbands. Now, let me just say before we get started, because it seems like when we talk to the men about what they do wrong, oftentimes, not all the times, but oftentimes they just take it. But when we talk about what the wives do wrong and how they don't show up, there's always a reason and a justification. And I wouldn't do this if you didn't do that. And listen, 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 we're not getting into the root. We're not getting into the why. We're not getting into the reasons because we're just dealing with what is being done. OK, so today we're going to talk about how wives can disrespect their husbands. And then tomorrow we're going to talk about how men can be completely unloving to their spouse and how both of you have to shift gears, right? And do things different if you want something different in your particular relationship. One of the things, one of the things, because when we, you have to understand, I've been talking to men uh, all over the world. I used to be a part of a major men's uh, conference where we would travel different parts of the of the country and throughout the world talking to men about their challenges and their struggles in relationships. And when men get alone in their own social space, they have conversations that you wouldn't even imagine. They are emotional. They begin to cry. They begin to tear. They show a vulnerable side of themselves that oftentimes they feel they can't show in their, with their spouse. And they begin to pour out and express some of the challenges that they're going through in their relationship. And so we want to we want to give you a peek into that conversation so that you can hear what men are saying. OK, and so if you are a man watching today, feel free to chime in. Uh, this is going to be an interesting conversation. Number one, and this is in no particular order, uh, certain ways that women can be disrespectful to their husbands is number one, focusing on his weaknesses, you know, taking the time to maximize what he doesn't do right and oftentimes they feel as if you minimize what they do do right and so there's a very critical tone and critical approach uh in disposition that you have to your towards your husband and so when you highlight his weaknesses all the time, this is why we hear so many men say, I just, I just feel like I'm not enough. I'm not good enough. You know, I'll never be enough. I'll, and so what happens is they begin to operate in this self-pity and self-shame that then reinforces bad behavior and causes them to do whatever it is that they do. But in essence, the love and the, the, the respect and the feeling and the connection that they once had with their wife and how they were celebrating and loved and adored, oftentimes for a variety of, of different reasons, there's a shift into the relationship. And then oftentimes it's all about what they're doing wrong and how they're not showing up. And it's about their weaknesses. And that impacts a man's ego. Now, keep in mind, ego is not gender specific. Women have ego and men have ego. But uh, for a lot of men, admiration, to be admired, to be valued, to be honored is significantly important. But when we're constantly pointed out for our flaws and how we're less than, it impacts men in a tremendous way. This is one of the ways they feel disrespected. Another another way that men often feel disrespected is when they feel, when they feel like they're being undermined. So when you're undermining him, uh, when you begin to question every decision he makes, when you begin to question the way that he thinks, his approach to things, it's, it's just like he comes with an idea or vision or plan. And listen, let me tell you something. Every man who has a plan, that's an awesome thing. Uh, we say this all the time. If you want your wife to 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 buy in to your plan, allow her to weigh in to your plan because there's wisdom, uh, there's perspective that she has uh, to contribute to, to to the overall vision of what you have that can make it even better. And I've given you several examples of that. But oftentimes when they come with something, if you're not in a good space in your relationship, oftentimes they feel attacked. They feel as if you're not on their side. They don't feel the support. You don't verbally articulate uh, what is good about it. But in essence, you question it and you may go around them and make decisions, okay, that they're not aware of. So in, op so in essence, you're operating in an independent way. And one of the powers of partnership is when two people come together and make a collective decision. But if I had the intention for this or a plan for that or was moving in this direction and for some reason either you verbally articulated that you didn't like it or you said absolutely nothing and went in another direction and beat me to the punch, oftentimes men feel undermined. And in that they feel 
disrespected. You understand? Respect is huge for a man. You know, uh, for those who are uh, much younger in the street, you know, they would fight over respect. You know, they tussle over respect. You know, and so when you're now dealing with a relationship, that didn't go away. The need for honor and respect is still there. And these are some of the ways that they can be compromised. Um, okay, good. Oh, let me just uh, uh, greet a couple people before we continue. Jody, good to see you, Jody. Um, we did an intensive a couple months ago. It's always good to see you back on the program. Derek, good morning. D, Fidelina, Jules, Clarence, Jackie, Gonzalez, Jessica, Vashon, LaShawn, Gorgeous Wells, Kisha, so on and so forth. Tanika, um, good to see you all. Francisco in the building, of course. Keisha, Rhoda, the list goes on and on. And if you're watching, Watching uh, on the replay right now, we want to appreciate you and thank you for being a part of this conversation. We're going to go deeper. We're talking about the ways in which a wife can oftentimes disrespect a husband, um, telling him how to do tasks. Now, this this is more for a lot of men a pet peeve. It's just like, hey, babe, I, can you do such and such? And then when they attempt to do it, now you want to tell them how to do it. Now, I know a couple of men who really complain about this. It's just like, wait a minute. I Listen, I'm different than you. I'm going to do it differently than you. And oftentimes I feel like in relationships, we are so married to the method and not the goal. So we come up with a plan, something that needs to be done. And because the pathway, the methodology, the approach is different now, all of a sudden you want to get all up in his space. No, no, no. You need to do it like this and you're doing it wrong. And, and maybe if you try it like that and it's just like, good God, can I do it my way? If it's going to be done, that's ultimately what it's all about. And so oftentimes a, a, a husband feels like a child. They feel like, you know, I, I, listen, I'm a grown adult. I've been living this life for X amount of years. I can do it. Give me the space and the opportunity to do it. That's one of the ways that men often feel disrespected. Another one, not acknowledging him when he arrives home. Now, this may seem like a pet peeve, but I get this. I get it. I hear this constantly by men. Like, just acknowledge me. I walk in the house, the dog greets me. I walk in the house, the kids are daddy, daddy, daddy. And then you over there scrolling through your phone, talking to your friends, watching your TV show, and I don't get any type of acknowledgement, not even a hello. Like I'm out here working for eight, 10, 12 hours a day trying to provide for the family. I'm sacrificing life, I'm doing all these things. I can't even get an acknowledgement. Like that's big for a spouse. And oftentimes men, you have to understand, Everything communicates. Everything communicates. So we've talked about this before, how your words are 7% of your communication, your tone, 23%, and your facial expressions, body language, and nonverbals, 70%. So when, you're when you say nothing, that is giving a message. It's sending a message. Now, the message that your spouse is interpreting could be absolutely wrong. You could just be busy. You could be caught up in something. For you, it's not a big deal. You're not trying to be disrespectful, any of that. But it's how he perceives it. And oftentimes, the perception is, you don't care. I come up in here. You can't even acknowledge me. And it can make him feel some type of way. And it can lead to all of the types of problems. Listen, guys, we're talking about uh, love and respect in your marriage, but more specifically, how wives can disrespect their husbands and how we can turn these particular things around. Listen, you're watching the Couples Academy show. We'll be right back after this short break.
right, guys, we're back here watching the Couples Academy show. We're talking about love and respecting your marriage. Listen, guys, this, see, I knew this was going to happen. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I'm here. I'm seeing comments. Well, it, you know, this acknowledgement goes both ways. Of course it does. Everything we're talking about goes both ways. Everything we're talking about goes both ways. Everything we're talking about goes both ways. But we're not talking about both ways right now. We're talking about you. We're talking about how wives need to show up in their marriage. See, here's the reality. Um, there's always a reason why you may be doing what you're doing. And oftentimes I hear wives say, well, it's only because or it's in reaction to, okay, but men can make the same argument because it's a two way street. But when we're focusing on what wives are doing wrong and how they need to show up, let's stay in that in that zone and in that phase because we will get to the men. We will get to them. And, and at the end of the day, no matter what your spouse is doing, you have a responsibility to show up in a particular way. This is why we say the lowest common denominator in any relationship you enter into is you, is you. And, and the reality is there were things that Danielle was doing that I reacted and responded to, but I had to make a decision. Well, if this dynamic is gonna change, I gotta change. Regardless of what she's doing, I've gotta make certain changes within me. And when I made those changes within me, it shifted the way she approached things and vice versa. There were things that I was doing that caused her to react a certain way. But the reality is this is what we call the crazy cycle. Well, you did this and I'm gonna do that. And because you showed up that way and I'm gonna show up this way and it becomes this tit for tat, back and forth type of dynamic. And that's the crazy cycle. And we never get off of it. And at some point, it's almost like the merry-go-round that keeps spinning and spinning and spinning. And at some point you could make a decision to get up off of it. Now, when I say get off the ride, some people think, yeah, I, I do need to get off. I need to leave completely. And that's not what I'm saying because that is not necessarily the solution. Listen, we are not where we once were. We were in a miserable place. We were headed straight to divorce. I mean, it was horrible. And we had to, we had to grow up and realize that both of us were acting in an immature way and we had to make independent decisions to work on us individually. And when we took the time to do that, everything began to shift. Now, it wasn't overnight. It took time. But these are the things that we needed to do in order to get things back on track. So please, if I'm talking about disrespectful things that wives do, own it because it's real. It is real. It happens every single day. If it didn't, we wouldn't be in, we wouldn't be doing what we're doing. We wouldn't have couples coming to us trying to figure out how to turn things around. All right. I'm reading these comments in real time. Uh, we're called to be respectful and loving regardless of our spouse's actions. Absolutely. Now, that doesn't make you boo boo the fool. That doesn't make you a wallflower. That doesn't make you crazy. No, it means that, you know what, while we're in this season of our relationship where things are not on track, I'm not going to allow you to cause me to step outside myself. I'm not going to allow you to cause me to become bitter and mad and, and vengeful and vindictive. No, 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 no. There's a, another approach. See, we think that, you know, uh, if our spouse continues to do wrong, then by showing up the right way, we're re re we are rewarding them for their bad behavior. And no, folks, that is not it at all. There are many approaches to changing a spouse's behavior with the way in which you show up. If you've been watching us long enough, we've given you several of those. But becoming a vengeful and spiteful and mean and, sh and no, that is not the way. That only makes things worse. There's a better approach to get the results that you're ultimately looking for. Um, eat the meat and throw away the bones. Let the man teach. Thank you. He will address the issues with the things about the husband's on tomorrow. And thank you. And thank I appreciate you saying that because if you know us, we are as balanced as they come. You know, you watch certain videos, you watch certain podcasts and certain people who come on. Their approach is so skewed. And they're either in a man's camp or a woman's camp and they're very polarizing and they, they got half the audience praising, half the audience criticizing because they don't take a balanced, fundamental approach. We do. We're Couples Academy. And listen, we're not on either one of your sides. We say this all the time. The, the first thing we say in the first session, listen, I'm not fighting for your first name. 
It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what side of the offense you're on. I'm not fighting for your first name because your first name represents your own agenda, your own perspective. Uh, we're fighting for your last name because your last name represents your marriage and your future and your legacy and whatever side of truth that we can get you both on to get in alignment. That is what we are committed to. And that's what we're going to do. Uh, let's go. Trying to be respectful when being cheated on is hard. It absolutely is hard. And that's why we are excited to see you this weekend because we're going to dig into the details of, of what that looks like. Because at the end of the day, you know, the principle of showing up the right way is good. Like I get it. The Bible says, or yeah, mama always said, but then how do we walk this thing out? How can we show up in the right way when things are still going on? That's what we're going to unpack. And that's why we're excited that you're coming. Um, I agree and see how I have been disrespectful of him. I generally have a comeback of why, but I see the errors in that. Yeah. I appreciate you sharing that because it's true. There's always, listen folks, there are always going to be justifiable reasons to be disrespectful, especially when you've been disrespected and haven't been loved in uh, the way that you signed up for. I get that. But, but what we do know is that two wrongs don't make a right. Two wrongs don't make it better. Two wrongs can make a worse situation. So I'm not just going to talk about what you're doing wrong. I'm going to talk about the appropriate approach to responding to unloving behavior by a spouse. We're just starting this series. It's going to get deep. I missed the beginning. Watch tomorrow. Though. Yeah. Awesome. Um, all right. To uh, be, be to him what you want to see. In other words, Keep sowing good seeds, sowing to him what you want to see uh, growth in him. I totally agree 1000% fighting for your last name. Beautifully said. I appreciate that. Listen, at the end of the day, guys, uh, we're going to get to a better place. Many of us are in different seasons and stages in our relationships. Some of you are just tuning in for the first time. Some of you have been watching us for a couple of weeks, some a couple of months, some about a year now. And literally at the end of the day, if you are implementing what it is that we talk about, it will make a significant difference in your marriage. I'm telling you, this is the daily bread that you need to take your relationship to the next level. So it's not just watching the videos, but it's having great conversation and dialogue with your spouse in implementing them into your life so that change and transformation could take place. All right, let's go to the next one. We're talking about how wives can be disrespectful to their husbands, discussing past relationships. Now, you know, when you're first dating somebody, they say this all the time, girl, don't talk about your past relationships. That's the last thing you want to do, man. What you doing? Why are you bringing up girls from the past? Like it, it, it's not about them anymore. It's about you and your partner. Now, in this particular context, oftentimes the comparisons are made, right? In my previous relationships, I didn't have to deal with all this. I ain't never have to go through this. I was loved and adored and like now we're romanticizing those past relationships and we're putting those past partners on pedestals because of how great they were. But why aren't you with them then? What happened that you're not with them? There's a reason why you broke up, isn't there? <laughs> There's a reason why you chose me and I chose you isn't there. So when you begin to bring up past relationships and what past people did, that that for many men is, is, is very, very disrespectful. And once again, I'm not saying that only women do this, but we're talking specifically about what wives do to their husbands. Another thing that and, and let's pause on this, because this is a major problem that we've heard about countless times from men oversharing. Oversharing. Now, I'm not talking about oversharing with your spouse. I'm talking about oversharing with people outside your home. So when there are problems in the home, you will go outside the home and start talking to your sisters, your girlfriends, mom and dad, the neighbor, the person that you just met at the grocery store, like the world knows about your problems. And oftentimes in your oversharing, obviously you're shaping what has happened and giving an impression about what's going on in your house. And most times when we overshare, we're not exposing ourselves, we're exposing our spouse. Now we have other people outside of our home who have a certain perception and belief about our partner that may be kind of skewed because it's it's being articulated through your lens and through your filter. And now you got other people looking at your spouse like they crazy. 
You have other people feeling some type of way. Here's what we do know is that when certain things are shared and you have gone through a recovery process individually and with your spouse and you're healed and you're in a better place, uh, not everybody's quick to forget. Not everybody's quick to forgive. And now there's an awkwardness with other relationships and with other people because what you've overshared. And this is why we say it is critically important that you learn to have a safe community, an inner core, a hub and spoke support model of individuals who are safe to talk to because they are friends of the marriage and will speak life into you and will guide you and will give you give you direction for your situation and not be those who just want to hear the, the latest conversation. And so it's very disrespectful to a husband when you begin going out, talking to other people about what's happening. Now, I do believe that it is unhealthy if nobody knows. Somebody needs to know but the right one needs to know. See, because if nobody, and so on the opposite end, we see this, where wise won't say a word, right? And a lot of times these are very unhealthy, disrespectful, abusive relationships. They're scared to, to speak a word for fear what their spouse will do. That's not what I'm talking about, folks. Not talking about that at all. So, so there's got to be a filter and someone that you can release and relate to, but it's got to be in a small community that you both have agreed to. Uh, and that's how you begin to bring the respect back into the relationship and actually move things in a positive direction and not make things worse in terms of the wrong people knowing the wrong things. All right, let's go to the next one. Making decisions without his input. That This is another thing, right? So I know, you know... Uh, <laughs> We've heard the term strong, independent, well, I'm going to make decisions, I'm grown, I can do it all by myself. But see, when you're making financial decisions without consulting your spouse, when you're making decisions about the children of, without consulting your spouse, uh, it's a problem. It is a major problem. Now, understand what I'm saying. Am I saying you have to ask, baby, would it be okay? Because this is what I'm thinking. Well, maybe if that's the dynamic of your relationship, but some men don't require that. They just want to be in the know. Like when you make a decision, like, just let me know. Bring me into the mix. Like it would have been okay. Like all of a sudden furniture's coming in, contractors coming in, vacations are being planned. It's just like, how are you making these decisions? And I didn't know nothing. Well, I just, I just did what, what I felt was the best thing for our, well, no, no. We're in a partnership. We're in a marriage. And in a partnership, I can't make independent decisions without asking or consulting or allowing you to weigh in or without, without allowing you to speak into that particular situation. It is healthy. But what happens is when there's a breakdown of communication, as it is the case for so many couples, this thing happens all the time. And I'm going to tell you, a man will feel completely disrespected and he will feel as if he has no authority, no power, no influence, no voice in his home when independent decisions are made. I'm going out, where you going? Out? Like, wait a minute, what? what, what? Just independently doing things. Like, it's just, it's insane, it's insane. And so this is where we have to open up dialogue and begin to build a healthy foundation for communication that helps a particular couple. All right, another one, bringing up divorce all the time. This is another one, folks. Like, stop threatening the divorce. And a lot of times, that's what it is. It's a threat. It's a form of control and manipulation, and it's a way to get your way. And, and, and oftentimes, you know, either that husband is panicking because he doesn't want to lose his marriage and now he feels like if I don't do, if I don't go along with, if I don't accommodate, then she's going to leave. Or he knows you ain't going nowhere, but you use it. And if you don't threaten divorce, you'll threaten other things, right? You, 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 you know how to threaten because you know what we as men love and what we need. And when you threaten that and that's now dangling over us, like, well, if you want this, you're going to have to do this. And it becomes very controlling and manipulative. And oftentimes men feel very disrespected in those situations. Let's go to the next one. Mothering him. This is a huge one. Listen, I am not your child. I am a grown man. Stop treating me like a child. Well, stop acting like a child. I get that. But there's a level of respect and honor that you give a husband. And oftentimes when a relationship turns into a parent-child dynamic, one of the biggest areas that it infects is intimacy. 
It does. I remember when I was on my reality show a couple of years ago, there was a couple and, and the wife literally kept sunning her husband. And I'm like, does she sun you like this all the time? Sunning her husband. And, and I, you know, I said, I said um, uh, you have a parent, child, like mother, son dynamic in this relationship. And I said, would you ever want to make love to your son? And she was like, ew, no. And I said, well, have you ever wanted to make love to your mother? He was just like, absolutely not. And I said, that's why you guys are not having sex. You're not having intimacy. There's no connection between you two because those are the roles that you're playing in this relationship. And until you turn those things around, listen, it's going to go from bad to worse. Uh, last one. Last one as we end this up. Over-spiritualizing everything. Now, listen, we are believers. We believe that the Bible is final authority in our lives. It is the foundation for who we are, for what we do and how we live and breathe and move in this earth. But oftentimes we can over-spiritualize or, or be too spiritual for basic normal situations and, and understand what we mean when we say this, because if the scripture is the, the word, you know, what you live by, if that is your template, that's what it should be as believers. But over spiritualizing things, it's just like, OK, um, do I want grits or do I want oatmeal? Well, oh, well, we need to. What is the word of God? Well, what does the word of God have to do with grits? Or, I mean, we're just talking about basic decisions. <laughs> and oftentimes, and, I, and I'm being, I'm being, uh, listen, I'm being humorous, but th sometimes it's just like that. These are the things that we do in relationships. And it's just like, here we go, right? And so now a husband can often feel disrespected because maybe they just want to have a basic conversation or make a basic decision. And here you come with this and that and the other. And it's just like, ah, oh, it creates a level of frustration in that relationship. We're talking about how wives can be disrespectful to their husbands. Now, let's just have a truthful conversation. Is any of this real? Does any of this apply to you? Does any of this resonate or am I completely off? Right. If we just pause for a second, look, the, look in the mirror. Right. And look at our reflect, reflection. Is there any truth? And if there is, what can we do today to shift and change things around for the betterment of ourselves, which ultimately leads to the betterment of our marriage? Folks, we're talking about love and respect and how we need to bring that back into the marriage. So listen, I know many of you are chomping at the bits. Can't wait to tune in tomorrow when we get on this me, these men and talk about how unloving they are. We're going to get there. But for the time being, just 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 resonate in this. You know, let it let it sink in, process it a little bit. And guess what? Have an honest conversation with your spouse. Be truthful. Ask your spouse, do I show up in any of these ways? Am I doing any of these things? Because I want to make sure that we're moving in a positive direction, not in a negative one. See, you're watching the Couples Academy show. Tune in tonight. I see some of your questions. We'll answer them at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at Ask the Expert. So tune in. See you guys, love you very much.